Hey guys, okay, here we are about to embark on the journey of the Odyssey. Um, I am going to kind of walk you through book one, give you some background information, some things that you guys should be aware of. A lot of kids um, get confused in book one. It kind of flips um, to a couple different characters and I don't want you to be confused. So we're gonna start off together. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit of this. I'm just on the first page if you wanna follow along. Sing to me of the man, muse, the man of twists and turns, driven time and again off course. Once he had plundered the hollow heights of Troy, many cities of men he saw and learned their minds, many pains he suffered, heartsick on the open sea, fighting to save his life and bring his comrades home. But he could not save them from disaster, hard as he strove. The recklessness of their own ways destroyed them all, the blind fools. They devoured the cattle of the sun, and the sun god wiped from sight the day of their return. Launch out on his story, muse, daughter of Zeus. Start from where you will. Sing for our time, too. By now, all the survivors, all who avoided headlong death, were safe at home. Escape the wars and waves. But one man alone... His heart set on his wife and his return, Calypso, the bewitching nymph, the lustrous goddess, held him back deep in her arching caverns, craving him for a husband. But then, when the wheeling seasons brought the year around, that year spun out by the gods when he should reach his home, Ithaca, though not even there would he be free of trials, even among his loved ones, then every god took pity, all except Poseidon. He raged on, seething against the great Odysseus, till he reached his native land. All right, so the Odyssey is really two stories, two journeys. So we have Odysseus, of course, um, uh, his journey getting home from the Trojan War, but then we also have his son Telemachus, and we go through his journey. And a lot of Telemachus's journey is really about becoming a man and, and gaining a good reputation for himself. All right, let's talk about Odysseus first, though. So Odysseus, first of all, we have to remember about him that he is wise um, and he's he's cunning is the word that you know is used a lot of times to describe him. So he is a little bit of a trickster um, and we're going to see this in the book um, through various ways. So that's one of the things you want to look for with Odysseus. Now at this point, the Trojan War is done and he has been trapped on a nymph's um, island, a goddess's island, um, Calypso. And he can't get off this island and he is trapped with her. She wants him for her husband, but all he wants is to get back home um, to his wife and to his son. Now, by the time Odysseus gets back to Ithaca, it will have been a total of 20 years. So 10 years um, fighting the Trojan War, and then 10 years of this journey getting back home. Um, and so really, we see all of his um, trials and problems and monsters that he's going to face and encounter. Um, and then even when he gets home, there's a really huge problem. Um, the second thing we need to remember about Odysseus as well is that um, Athena, Athena, the goddess of war and wisdom, has his back. And she, at this point in the book, is pleading to her father, Zeus, to allow Odysseus to get off of the island and to finally um, make his way back home. Um, so that's where we're at. Now, we also learn that Poseidon is the god that does not want him to, um, that is, well, is trapping him. Um, and we will learn soon that it is because um, Odysseus blinded his son, the Cyclops. Um, yeah, Poseidon's son is a Cyclops. But anyway, so that's why he's mad at Odysseus, but we'll get to that in um, a few books. Okay, so he is trapped. Athena's begging for him to be released. Zeus agrees and says, yeah, it's it's time for him to be released. Although 
Poseidon is um, gone. He's not on Mount Olympus right now. He is gone at this feast where they're honoring him. So he doesn't learn that Odysseus is set free and is able to, to go and do his thing. So they send Hermes, the messenger, messenger god, to go release Odysseus, um, and then we'll find out what happens to him. And then Athena, she goes to Telemachus and she disguises herself as Mentes. So she's disguised, and with that, oh, dog barking. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. So with that, um, Athena goes to Ithaca where we see what's going on with Telemachus and Penelope. And what we find is that the entire palace is overrun with suitors. And this is a weird thing that doesn't quite make sense, I, I don't think, in our modern mind. Um, but we have to remember that a huge part of Greek culture, um, and this was apparent in the Iliad too, so hopefully this will sound familiar, is um, something called xenia. And this is hospitality. Um, so you were not supposed to... Um, you know, tell a stranger no if they needed a place to stay, if they needed food or shelter, whatever. Um, you were supposed to be hospitable. Um, and a big part of this was because they thought that they didn't know, like, who could be a god. So you wouldn't want to ever turn away a god. Um, that was a big part of it. Uh, so Xenia, that hospitality is huge. So basically what's happened is because Penelope's been, you know, um, without a husband for so long, although they don't know that he's dead, but I would think they're assuming he's dead. Um, you know, these men have been coming to try to get her to, to marry them. Um, and basically, we just have this snowball effect of all of these men have come, and they're basically just having this huge party all the time. They're super obnoxious, and they are definitely breaking every single rule of hospitality. However, Telemachus and his mother are kind of powerless to do anything. Telemachus does not have this reputation. He hasn't earned, if you want to say, the right. You know, he's, he's not a man yet. Um, he's not powerful enough yet to get rid of these men. Plus, there's like a hundred of them. It's not, you know, like you have five guys and he can't get rid of them. So this is a disaster for them. And they can't stand it, but there's not much they can do. Penelope, we see her in this. She is still pining away for her husband. Um, she has remained completely loyal to him. That's another big thing that you guys want to remember um, is how women are portrayed in this book. So we kind of have our good women versus our bad, evil women. Women are definitely portrayed mostly as seductresses. Um, and then bad things happen because of that usually. Penelope does not fall into that category. She is loyal. She's good. There's going to be a couple other women that fall into that category, but it's far and few between. So keep your um, eyes open for that. And then we have, um, let's see, Telemachus, the suitors. Athena talks to Telemachus with this disguise. Um, he kind of thinks, yeah, this is probably Athena. So he's emboldened, has some courage. One of the suitors, Antinous, challenges him and says, oh, I hope that Zeus never makes you the king. Um, and really at this point, he, Telemachus would have to earn his right being a king. It's not going to be enough that his father was the king. Um, he's going to have to have that reputation and, and earn and fight all of these men in order to rule if that if it comes down to it. So Athena gives Telemachus hope that his father is still alive. I'm just kind of looking at my notes, making sure I didn't forget anything. Um, with that, we really have um, Athena telling Telemachus it's time for him to be a man, to stand up to these suitors, um, and we're going to see him grow. So we're going to watch for that as well in the, in the next books to come. Um, Telemachus... <sighs> With all of this, gains some courage, and he calls for an assembly in the morning. And they basically just come up with a plan that if um, 
Telemachus is going to go and see if he can hear anything about his dad. Um, if he doesn't, then, you know, they're going to decide, okay, well, then he's probably dead. But they're going to wait a year and see if he can find out anything about his father. Um, so that's the plan that him and Athena come up with. And let's see, our other themes that you guys need to watch out for, uh, like I already said, hospitality, Xenia. Uh, reputation. One of the biggest things in here is for Odysseus keeping his reputation. That's one of his most treasured possessions. For Telemachus, it's going to be um, gaining, earning that reputation. Revenge. Revenge is going to be a huge one, especially with those suitors. Uh, power and, of course, loyalty. So those are all things you want to look for um, as you begin your reading. And let me just check my notes really quick. I think that is about all you guys need to know for book one. Um, and you guys can start your reading for book two. Okay.